Good morning, all, and uh, thank you for coming. I appreciate the opportunity to meet again with uh, Foreign Secretary Vila Ray and Secretary of the Interior Osorio, and I also want to express my appreciation for the entire Mexican delegation who made the trip up to Washington, D.C. today for very, very useful and fruitful conversations. Also, want to thank my colleague Secretary Kelly and the representatives of the Department of Homeland Security who participated today, as well as Treasury, uh, who had participants here in our dialogue. Both Mexico and the United States are focused on destroying the criminal organizations that bring drugs into the United States and carry out violence across Mexico. We will keep our commitments to protecting our people from lawlessness, drugs, and criminal violence. Almost 20,000 Americans died from overdoses of heroin or synthetic opioids, including fentanyl, in 2015. An estimated 100,000 Mexicans have died in drug-related violence since 2006. Many of them brave members of law enforcement who died in the line of duty, and we honor their sacrifice. America must also confront the reality that we are the market. But for the seemingly endless demand by addicted users and the successful recruitment of young and vulnerable new users, there would be no market. We as American parents and friends of those who become addicted or would-be targets must take new approaches as well. We Americans must own this problem. It is ours. Stopping the cross-border flow of drugs is an essential step in putting an end to widespread addiction and drug-related violence. Too many families in America have been devastated by illegal drugs, and we must stop this epidemic in its track. No parent should endure the nightmare of a child succumbing to drug addiction. By aggressively confronting the cartels operating in the United States and Mexico, we're striving to stop merchants of death who have already helped cause unspeakable pain to so many on both sides of the border. Today, we identified fresh strategies to attack the business model of these multi-billion dollar criminal organizations, with particular emphasis on cash flow and the flow of weapons. We will work with Mexico to refocus assistance on better disrupting the business model of the traffickers. We will attack their means of production, their cross-border distribution networks, their cash flow, and their weapons procurement. The Trump administration's efforts to fight the demand for these devastating drugs and the criminal activity and drug trafficking at the Mexican border and elsewhere has only just begun. We will continue to partner with Mexico to disrupt and destroy the criminal organizations with threat which threaten our citizens, our communities, and our country. And we will commit to addressing the pervasive demand for illicit drugs among our fellow citizens. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Secretary Tillerson, for hosting us. Thank you, Secretary Kelly, uh, for being here, and for all the, to, to all the people involved uh, from the U.S. government as well as the Mexican agencies that participated in this meeting today. Thank you very much. I will, I, I will switch to Spanish um, in a moment um, to, this, to, to uh, refer to the um, uh, conversation that we just had here at the State Department. But before doing that, uh, let me uh, refer to something that just happened today. Uh, which is uh, very important to the U.S.-Mexico relationship and to North America. And um, uh, today, as you all know, um, the U.S. Trade, uh, US trade representative um, sent notice uh, to the U.S. Congress about its intention to uh, start uh, the process of NAFTA renegotiation. The government of Mexico welcomes uh, this development. Um, we are prepared. We are ready. And this is uh, to work together with both the governments of the U.S. and Canada to make our trade agreement better, better for the people of Mexico, the people of the U.S., and the people of Canada. Uh, we understand that this is a 25-year-old agreement when it was negotiated. The world has changed. We've learned a lot, and we can make it better. 
we can make this a negotiation that is good for the three parties involved, certainly under a win-win framework. Uh, the Ministry of the Economy in Mexico, La Secretaría de Economía, will lead the process. We have a very capable negotiating team and will approach this process constructively. And we are sure that this is going to be a step towards um, improving our relationships and building a future together. Now, if you allow me, I will switch um, to Spanish. Today, we have taken one more step in the building of a new bilateral relationship between Mexico and the United States, a broad, deep, and undoubtedly complex relationship, a relationship with many angles, and in all of them, from a comprehensive perspective, we are working. Just as for trade, there is a process underway. Also, our cooperation on the issue of security, and especially in the fight against criminal organizations operating in both territories and other regions of the world, is an essential element of our cooperation. Today's discussions were based on previous discussions, in particular the meeting where we had the honor of counting with Secretary Stillerson and Kelly in the city of Mexico, where we decided to discuss this shared problem from the perspective of a team and a comprehensive approach, understanding all of the components of the problem. Today we had an analysis meeting. We shared diagnosis so as to build a new shared strategy. While it was not a meeting where we reached new agreements or where specific strategies were developed, it was indeed a meeting where we were able to achieve fundamental agreements on the nature of the problem, on our diagnostics, and also on understanding that we need to tackle jointly all of the elements in the chain of this criminal business model. We need to overcome the blame game and the finger pointing aspect. We must understand that every demand creates supply and every supply creates demand. If the governments of Mexico and the United States discuss who's to blame, who's responsible, the only one who wins is organized crime, that is bringing violence and death on both sides of the border. The time has come for us to dare think in a different way. We need to trust more in ourselves and work jointly on all of the elements in this production chain, starting with the crops, the importation of material, production, financial flows of cash, flows of weapons, and of course, the problem of demand, which is at the root of this scourge which has cost so much to both countries. We will continue to work. Undoubtedly, it is a long path ahead, but today we have taken an important step by establishing together the diagnosis and undertaking the commitment, the commitment for both governments to work together as a team to face this problem, which is a problem of everyone. I'd like to express my thanks to the different areas of the Mexican government, the Secretary of Government, and other areas of our government where are represented here with the Ministry of Finance, the General Prosecutor's Office, the Financial Intelligence Agency, with the objective of reaching shared diagnostics. They will continue to work jointly on the process. Finally, and from this podium, I'd like to 
acknowledge the Mexican Armed Forces, which for years have been an essential pillar in the fight against this serious phenomenon, and which with their lives and their effort have shown their love for their motherland. So our gratitude and highest level of recognition to them for their participation in this action. Thank you very much, Secretary Tillerson. Thank you, Secretary Kelly. Well, thank you for that. Uh, it's certainly a great pleasure for me to be meeting with our good friends again from Mexico. In my previous life, I served at, uh, the Southcom as the Southcom commander. During that period of time, I built relationships with the government of Mexico and particularly with the uh, military and the police that serve Mexico. And I would like to add my voice uh, to the minister's voice, to the secretary's voice about the brave men and women in the uh, Mexican armed forces and police that have done so much to protect uh, your country and to provide leadership in the region. Uh, you've lost many, many hundreds of men and women in this fight against these terrible scourges. Uh, one of my first stops, uh, well, my first stop actually as the Secretary of Homeland Security was to Mexico City, as has been referenced, to meet with the Foreign Secretary, many others in the Mexican government, to include the President. We are in constant contact. I am, my department is, with our counterparts in Mexico. And our people, Mexicans and Americans, work together every day, whether it's to uh, deal with drug smuggling or human smuggling or terrorism. Our working relationship is vitally important, and it is a very, very good one. Part of that is because of our collaboration is built on co-responsibility. We must own the problems of cartels and, sol and uh, the solutions to deal with those cartels. While the United States is indeed the magnet that feeds drug smuggling through Central and South America and all the ills that are associated with that activity, it is mostly our friends in Mexico and to the South that feel the brunt of the violence and the crime. We are attacking the cartels in many ways, including to attack their business models, attacking their financing, attacking their funding, attacking their ability to run a profitable criminal business. And it has been successful to a degree, and we will continue, as you have heard uh, up here, we'll continue that, deepen it, and broaden it with some very, very innovative new ideas. Now, while the specific focus today was on the cartels and other aspects of the drug trade, this is an indication of the broad uh, number of issues we, the United States and Mexico, work with together every day. I look forward to working with my Mexican friends later this summer when they are participating, indeed co-sponsoring uh, a uh, Central American Security and Prosperity Conference in Miami, where a wide range of security issues will be on the agenda, including transnational criminal organizations. This will be an opportunity to bring Mexico and their fantastic leadership team together on these issues uh, as we deal uh, with the problems of security and economic uh, conditions in the Northern Triangle countries. And we'll try to address the regional threats to security and stability. We are excited. I am personally excited to have Mexico as a partner at that conference. And so I will close by saying thank you, Secretaries, uh, and Rex Tillerson as well, for this opportunity to collaborate in this very, very important endeavor. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Secretary Tillerson, Secretary Kelly, Secretary Videgaray. Today, a representative from both countries, as it was already said, we had a follow-up uh, meeting, uh, and we addressed one of the most important issues in our bilateral agenda, which is the joint activities to combat organized crime related to drug trafficking. This phenomenon is one of the largest risks to the health, security, and of course for the development of the peoples in Mexico and the U.S. During this meeting, the representatives of Mexico expressed our vision and our experience in the fight against organized crime. And as a result of this, both countries have agreed how urgent it is to work on a binational level in a more equitable way, as Secretary Videgaray just said, and 
we have to work in a comprehensive manner. We uh, understand the decision and the commitment of Secretary Tillerson and Secretary Kelly to look for new ways to address this issue. We have found in them a shared vision and a spirit of collaboration. We agreed how important it is to address the whole chain of supply and to fight the organized uh, crime organizations that operate on both sides of the border. It is a meeting that, would, uh, that allowed us to uh, work on an issue that affects both countries, that generates violence, that uh, calls for a lot of resources on both countries. And if we cannot coordinate in an efficient manner, and if we don't share the information, we won't be able to progress. I think that this meeting gives us a good path to follow in the fight against uh, the drug trafficking, and it's very important for both countries and the continent. We'll open up, up to questions now. Ask your question, direct your question to one minister at a time. We'll start first with Felicia Schwartz from the Wall Street Journal. Felicia. Uh, thank you. Uh, Secretary Tillerson, um, this is at least the third time that the president has made an announcement ahead of your talks with the Mexicans that could sour them. When you flew to Mexico, he said that he would deport all uh, migrants there, uh, which the Mexicans didn't uh, appreciate. Uh, he signed an executive order about the wall when uh, foreign minister was in town and then uh, this morning told Congress that he'd renegotiate NAFTA. Uh, are you going to be able to negotiate with Mexico when the president uh, keeps stepping on your toes? Okay. Uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, um, are, the, are the Americans negotiating in good faith and, and what did you say about NAFTA in your meetings? Well, I hope what this morning's uh, press avail with you is demonstrating is that there are a broad range of issues of great importance and common concern between the United States and Mexico. Obviously trade is an important, extremely important uh, issue and I think uh, the filing of the, the uh, authorities with the Congress this morning to start moving towards a fast track authority is a very positive move and I think it does demonstrate a sincere effort on the part of the President. And, uh, and I'll leave it to those who will be involved directly in those discussions uh, to comment in the future about those. Uh, but what I would tell you is I, I hope what you take away from today is, a, is an understanding that there is much more to the U.S. relation, U.S.-Mexico relationship than just NAFTA. Uh, the wall does not define our relationship. We have so many areas of mutual interest, and I think the focus on transcriminal organizations, the focus on the devastating effect that drug trafficking, illicit trafficking of drugs and other illicit trafficking through organized crime is affecting both of our countries in very tragic ways. And I think what uh, we had in a, a spirit today of very open, very frank, very candid conversations about where we have succeeded in the past, what is standing in the way of our success in the future, and I think a very uh, strong willingness, and you've heard this expressed, I think, in the comments of both uh, secretaries from Mexico, very strong commitment to overcoming whatever those obstacles may have been in the past, whether it be in, in sharing of intelligence information, sharing of resources. Uh, we have one common objective here, and this is to end the tragic impacts of illicit drug, drug trade on both sides of our border. We know what we own. And we as Americans need to confront that we are the market. There is no other market for these, these activities. It is all coming here. But for us, Mexico wouldn't have the transcriminal organized crime problem and the violence that they're suffering. And it's, we really have to own up to that. So I think we've had very open, frank conversations. There are so many areas of cooperation between our two countries. And we're going to focus on those that we can make progress on now. And there will be other talks to make progress on other, other areas of importance, including uh, the renegotiation, restructuring of NAFTA. Let me just be really clear about this. We've been informed all along the way at each and every step 
of the process of sending the notice that happened today uh, by the USTR's office, by the Department of Commerce, and by the White House. And let me say something else. This is something that we very much welcome, and this is a development that we've been waiting for for quite some time. It's good news for Mexico, and we are willing and we are prepared to start a constructive negotiation once, once the 90 days periods go, period go by. Uh, this will be mid-August, and we're ready to go. So this is what happened today. What the USTR sent to Congress is something that is a significant net positive for the Mexico-US relationship, and uh, we will build upon that. Ahora tiene la palabra. We give the floor to Jose Díaz Briseño from Newspaper Reforma. Secretary Videgaray, the Mexican, sorry, the U.S. government continues to toy with the idea of splitting NAFTA into, into two bilateral agreements in, and not just one trilateral. Is this an option for Mexico? And Mr. Tillerson, eh, journalists in Mexico are being killed at record numbers. This week, probably one of the most important reporters covering the drug trade was killed in Mexico. Will you raise this issue with the Me Mexican government of effectively prosecuting these crimes? Gracias, Jose. Thank you. NAFTA is a trilateral agreement and the conversations need to be trilateral in nature. This is our position. And what we have heard from the United States government, especially from Wilbur Ross, the Secretary of Trade, is that the United States does not have a preference in one sense or another. We do have a preference. The agreement is trilateral and should continue to be a trilateral platform. Why? because this is what allows us to maximize the competitive potential of the region that should be the most competitive one in the world, North America. Chains of value are highly integrated, especially with regards to manufacturing, and this would allow us to have the best platform to continue to work in these regards. We need to acknowledge that even with the current treaty, there are certain aspects that apply only bilaterally. Each of the countries excluded at the time over 20 years ago certain sectors from the agreement. Some sectors in Mexico have a special treatment as a result of the agreement. So. Within the framework of the agreement, there could be certain issues that are bilateral in nature between Mexico and the United States, or Mexico and Canada, or Canada and the United States, but our preference is clear. We believe the framework of a trilateral agreement is the most suitable and the most convenient for the peoples of Mexico, Canada, and the United States. Well, with respect to the tragic uh, death of the important journalist in Mexico. Uh, we offer our deepest condolences, certainly to uh, the loved ones and the family members. And it is yet again another uh, tragic loss among journalists, but also many others, as a result of the violence related to the illicit drug trade. Uh, I think in terms of how we address that, we had very good discussion about how do we improve the information sharing among law enforcement, agencies on both sides of the border, because these cartels and organizations operate across the border as well. And we, we discussed how do we identify those organizational connections, how do we share information that will allow us to better identify who is responsible, have those people arrested and brought to justice. Similarly, we had discussions around how to strengthen the judicial system. And we know that uh, Mexico has a draft law in, uh, for consideration that would allow the seizure of property and assets of those who have been arrested and charged in the illicit drug trade. Uh, we have similar laws in this country, and we have encouraged Mexico to proceed with the enactment of that law as well. So there has been very good sharing among ideas on the law enforcement side as well and the justice side. So we, we are working together cooperatively to attack the problem. 
Rich Edson from Fox News. Uh, Secretary Kelly and uh, Secretary Tillerson, uh, given the frequency with which you both interact with foreign counterparts, as evidenced by today, uh, and uh, much of what's involved in your everyday work, uh, and given the investigations, the former FBI director's memo, and all that's happening domestically, ahead of the president's first foreign trip uh, with significant meetings scheduled with foreign leaders, has the president lost leverage or credibility, and have these issues hampered efforts that you have with international counterparts? Thank you. I go first. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no. Uh, I would tell you, I just uh, actually returned from uh, uh, a trip I took to Jordan and Saudi Arabia, um, and uh, they are so looking forward uh, in that part of the world to the arrival of, of the president um, and the, the gesture of where, he, where he's going first. Uh, I could say the same thing uh, about the Israelis and others. I'll let uh, the Secretary of State answer that. But no, uh, I, I interact with a, a fairly large number of uh, international players, uh, often, most often by phone, uh, but Europeans, uh, Central, uh, Latin Americans, Central Americans, uh, Africans, I mean, across the globe, and, uh, and uh, uh, they are working with us as partners on a range of issues, aviation security, drugs, as you've heard here today, immigration. Uh, so I, I feel no effect at, uh, from uh, when the president is, uh, let's say, taking the task in the press uh, about something he may or may not have said and certainly something he may or may not have meant. So. Am I concerned about intelligence sharing? We share, uh, and as, as I say, I interact with a great many foreign leaders at the ministerial level, my counterparts, and I share as much information with them as our laws uh, allow. And they are open to that. Uh, in those places, I cannot share more. They understand uh, that and the fact that this country, my department, our president, has the safety uh, of uh, our citizens and their citizens number one in his mind. I guess I would characterize uh, the expectation among the rest of the world and whether, and I've had the opportunity now to pretty well interact and meet with leaders from Europe to Russia to Central Asia to the Middle East to Africa to Southeast Asia, Northeast Asia. So I have a pretty good exposure now to the globally to how the world is seeing the current administration. And what I would tell you is there is a great sense of expectation and I think a great welcomeness of America returning to the scene. Many of the leaders, particularly in the part of the world, will be traveling. The Middle East, Central Asia, and even parts of Africa are ready for a period of what they view to have been neglect to outright dismissal of their concerns, they're ready for re-engagement with America. And so I think there is a great anticipation of the President's trip as to what could be accomplished. And we, in our dialogues, have identified much that can be accomplished when we work together. And that is, that is the purpose of this trip, is really one of conveying a message that America is back in terms of our role as a convener, our role, our role as a facilitator to address the daunting challenges that exist in that part of the world, and most particularly the challenge of global terrorism and how we confront global terrorism as a global people's. It is not just one nation's challenge. It is one that's shared by all of us. And I think the importance of this trip uh, and President Trump's leadership around bringing people the world over to understand we are in this together. This is not a battle about religions. This is not a battle about cultures. This is a battle about good and evil. And there, the goodness of people of all faiths will prevail over this evil. And that is the President's message he'll be taking, and he will be convening people globally to confront this face of evil wherever it presents itself in the world. There's a great anticipation around that leadership. I think the people in the rest of the world take, do not have the time to pay attention to what's happening domestically here. 
They are more concerned about what they see happening in the relationship with their country and what we are bringing to address these very serious challenges that are affecting all of us. Rich, thank you. La última pregunta está. The last question by Ruben Barrera from Notimex. Go ahead, please. Um, Secretary Osorio. Secretary Osorio, I would like to see if you could explain when you said that you would like to see a binational effort that is more balanced, what do you mean by that? And which would be the possible changes that could uh, happen vis-a-vis uh, -vis how the Mexican government is fighting the drug trafficking organization based uh, on the stars of this comment? Talking uh, a lot about the drop in illegal crossings because of the policy that President Trump has announced on the immigration uh, front. But uh, we have not heard anything regarding uh, drugs. Uh, my question is why? And if uh, can we expect to see a significant drop on drug seizures across the south uh, uh, border after the wall is finished, maybe by the end of this administration? Cuando, eh, when we, when we uh, were taking this dialogue, we talked about the costs to the U.S. and to Mexico, the issue of the drugs. We are talking about human cost in the U.S. because of consumption and human loss in Mexico on the side of the armed forces and the law enforcement and different organizations that fight organized crime. So we, we can't just talk about unilateral actions on the U.S. or Mexico. We have to have very strong actions based on actions for both. We have to share information and we have to reach agreements that will would not allow access to market to these organizations. And Mexico is part of the problem. Production has to be curtailed. So basically, that's the balance that we have to achieve. And it has to be based on this comprehensive uh, talks, as um, Secretary Vedegaray said. One of the issues is security. We have to work on that because we don't want to give the idea that this violence is not being addressed on our side. And this is why we talked about the comprehensive issue on all the problems that both sides face and what are the alternatives that we could find to uh, solve this issue together. The issue of, uh, of the, the smuggling of drugs into, into the United States. Uh, we, we already do a great deal at the border, uh, and not alone. We do it with our Mexican counterparts uh, to the south. Uh, the vast majority of hard drugs, methamphetamines, uh, cocaine, and heroin, uh, come up smuggled primarily in vehicles, trucks, that kind of thing. Uh, oftentimes, with the, uh, particularly in the, in the commercial trucks, oftentimes the driver doesn't even know they're in there. Uh, so the, the first point, uh, or the, let me start at the end. The end is to get after the TCOs, the transnational criminal organizations, the networks in Mexico and in the United States. That's, that's the last thing. The first thing we need to do, because it, it generates all of the problems, and that is the drug demand in the United States. Uh, and not only the, uh, the drugs that are used by addicts, but the recreational use of drugs. You know, if, if Americans understood that playing around with drugs on a weekend for fun ultimately ends uh, or results in, in the lives lost in Mexico by law enforcement and by, um, and by uh, uh, the military, or lives lost in Colombia or Central America. If Americans understood uh, that recreational playing around with drugs 
uh, is resulting in the deaths of reporters and media people throughout the region, but particularly, unfortunately, in Mexico right now. Uh, police officers, as they say, soldiers, prosecutors, judges. If Americans that use drugs recreationally understood that and stopped doing that, uh, that would significantly reduce the amount of drugs and consequently the amount of profits that come out of the United States. So the most important thing we can do is reduce the drug demand. We've never tried it. We've never done it. We have to have develop a comprehensive drug demand reduction program in the United States that involves everybody. It involves uh, professional sports, Hollywood, it involves governors, mayors, it involves parents, priests, it involves everybody. We can reduce the amount of drugs consumed in the United States significantly. Never go to zero, but we can reduce it. But until we do, we'll be fighting at best a, a neutral battle on the, on the border. The drug traffickers are extremely agile, uh, extremely innovative in how they do business, incredibly brutal. Uh, if you won't take their bribes and their money, they'll kill your daughter and make their point that way. Uh, so it's all about drug demand and drug demand reduction. No, the uh, physical barriers work. Uh, where there is, there are 650 miles of physical barrier already on the southwest border between the United States uh, and um, in Mexico. All of that built. Uh, uh, previous to this administration. So there is use for uh, physical barrier. There's also use for technology. There's tr to, to say the least, there's use uh, in terms of the collaboration between Mexican authorities and U.S. authorities. And then obviously it's all about uh, people that patrol, talk to each other, uh, police actions uh, on both sides of the border. So there's no one single solution to this. It's a multifaceted problem and it needs multifaceted solutions. All right. Thank you. That's all we have time for.